Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual session. Today's topic will be so much interesting to you because you can't deny the fact that you will be making a lesson plan. But how are you going to do this? I think some of you here have an idea of what are we going to tackle. So let us begin. Any idea for a lesson plan? First, you need to define what is a lesson plan. So what is a lesson plan? It is a guide that the teacher uses every day to determine what the students will learn, how the lesson will be thought, as well as how learning will be evaluated. So for us teachers, why is it necessary to have a lesson plan? Lesson plan enables teachers to function more effectively in the classroom by giving a detailed outline that they adhere to during each class. And also, I will introduce to you about a curriculum guide that will be very helpful in making your lesson plan. What is a curriculum guide? It is a structured document that delineates the philosophy, goals, objectives, learning experiences, instructional resources, and assessments that comprises a specific educational program. And now, we will proceed to the process of creating a lesson plan. In any class, there are going to be things that you can't predict. But the more prepared you are, the easier it will be to adapt the unexpected so you can effectively teach and respond to your students. First things first. So you need to determine who are your audience or what grade are you going to teach. You need to really know your students. This includes information such as their interests, ability levels, whether they work better independently or in groups, um, any special needs that may require lesson tweaks, and their backgrounds. Knowing their learning preferences can also be helpful for us teachers. Second, you need to find the curriculum guide of which grade level are you in and what specific subject. For example, you will search curriculum guide for grade 3 science. The third one is what do your students already know? Knowing your students' prior knowledge of a subject can help you plan lessons. If you've been building lesson plans all along to follow a curriculum, you will already know what you've previously presented to your students. This allows you to continue with the flow. Number four, the best way to get them to learn. Determine the best ways to get your students to learn. Younger students may do well with a lot of interactive teaching, while an older class may do better with a lecture and slideshows. After the first classes, you will have a better idea of how to keep your students engaged. You can break down the teaching techniques that you can use in your lesson plan. The parts of a detailed lesson plan. 1. Objectives. 2. Subject matter. 3. Procedure. And it is composed of prayer, greetings, checking of attendance, passing of assignments, and motivation. 4. Presentation or the discussion. 5. Generalization. 6. Assessment And last but not the least, number 7, the assignment. Here are some steps in making a lesson plan. Once you've identified the components that need to go into teaching your class, you're ready to use these 8 steps in building your lesson plan. 1. Identify the objectives. To build a lesson, you first need to identify the objectives of each class. What do you hope to accomplish by the end of the period? 
Are there specific things that your students should know or be able to do? 2. Determine the needs of your students. At the start of the class, be sure to let students know what to expect so they can stay focused on meeting your objectives. When reviewing materials, some of your students may need more encouragement than others. Identifying these needs in your lesson plan will help you prepare. Number three, plan your sources and materials. Make a list of the resources and materials you will need to teach this lesson, such as paper, pens, and rollers. Don't forget to include technology resources in your plan when appropriate, such as laptops and gamified learning tools like apps or educational websites. Number four, engage your students. You need to get them interested in what this lesson is all about. Give them an outline of what you're going to be presenting. Then, introduce the subject more informally. For example, if you're teaching students a formula, try deriving it from scratch to build their intuition for where it comes from. Or, if you're discussing certain historical events, Try to draw parallel between those and any current events so students can relate to the material. Number five, instruct and present information. This is the time to instruct and use whatever resources you've included in your lesson plan. Involve your student in the process whenever possible so they are engaged. For example, you could ask students to come to the board and solve certain problems or answer questions. Don't forget to account for the different learning styles of your students. So you can use teaching methods that work for everyone. Number six, allow time for student practice. After teaching new material, leave time for students to practice. There are three practice methods that, when work in order, are a good way to reinforce what you've just taught. One, guided practice. With a guided practice, you're taking students back through what they are just learned, letting them add their own input as they gain confidence with the new information. Two, collaborative process. With the partners or in a group, the collaborative process is all about students talking with their peers as they explore their new concept. Circulate among your class and offer additional instruction or help when needed to clarify points. Third, independent practice. After the collaborative practice, it's time for students to practice what they have learned on their own. Adapt independent practice according to the material you have just presented, such as using worksheets or having students write a short essay. Number 7. Ending the lesson. Finish the lesson with a quick wrap-up. Do a brief overview of the lesson, including the main concepts the class learned. Ask students to identify the key ideas as a refresher and leave them with a preview of the next lesson so they know what to expect. Number 8. Evaluate the lesson. Did you achieve your learning objectives? Provide students with the opportunity to show they know the material by using a short quiz or a test. Depending on the results, your next lesson plan may include a review of information before moving into the new material. Now, you are ready in making a lesson plan. Congratulations! Thank you and goodbye everyone. See you next meeting.